you beautiful bastards. Hope you have a fantastic Friday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Now before moving forward, this Friday video is a little bit of a compromise. This is our first week back, not only as a show, but as a company. We have nothing but meetings today. Making the current show in schedule, developing new shows. The, the app is almost out. Prepping the team for the onboarding of new employees for the new things we're releasing. We're slammed, but I still wanted to get a video out to you beautiful bastards, so I decided to cover one story that was heavily requested and another that is truly horrifying to me and it is an example of why I don't trust the system. And the first thing we're gonna talk about today is an update and an add-on to the Logan Paul situation. Now, if you don't know the full details of the story as we covered it in the Wednesday show, I highly recommend you watch that first. The update to that story is, where is Logan Paul now? Well, after the fallout, he tweeted, taking time to reflect, no vlog for now, see you soon. He's pulling back for a moment. That said, as I said Wednesday, this is still not going to hurt Logan Paul. Most of his core audience does not care. They have his back. He said, if anything, this is a speed bump. And looking at his analytics, that is exactly what has taken place. On Tuesday, he slowed down to just gain 16,000 new subscribers. And then Wednesday, he shot to the highest subscriber growth he has had in the past month, getting over 80,000 new subscribers in a day. So there was that update, and then there was a very requested add-on involving Reyna Scully. Now with Reyna, a lot of you that have been watching for a very long time, you know that one point I, I brought on, I employed Reyna, a funny lighter news channel at the time. And she made a video on the Logan Paul situation, which was an interesting point of view, especially because she's from Japan. And it was an interesting video on its own. It was being shared a lot on its own, but it ended up making national headlines because of all of the hate. Specifically, the racial slurs and profanities thrown at her from people that appear to be Logan's fans. Others just stupid and hateful. Some comments reading, Ching Chang Chung, shut the fuck up, you suicide faggots. Let the Japs kill themselves, Logan, for life. You didn't mean to find a dead body, you Chinese shit. Others just defending Logan, saying, Logan has done nothing wrong. Like, what's everyone crying for? It's a fucking dead body like he knew he was gonna find a dead body. He's a fucking savage because he's going to upload the video. It's a savage video, so enjoy your views from Logan. And it's here I kind of want to point out why why I think it's important to separate Logan Paul from his fans. I think that there is some crossover, but I think there are several things to unpack here. One, you can't control your fans and all it takes is a few fuckheads to make everyone look bad, right? Even if you are immensely conservative and you're like, okay, only 1% of the people that watch me are horrible or stupid or racist. And you're Logan Paul and you're pulling six to eight million views per video, that 1% adds up. Once again, 1% for any audience is incredibly conservative. Some would argue it's an outright ridiculously small estimate. And I think that's important to note, especially since, as I've said, I think that what Logan Paul did was incredibly wrong, disgusting. It hurts my brain wondering how they thought it was okay. But just keep in mind, these people are saying this, even though Logan Paul has said, do not defend me, what I have done is not defensible. And also on the note of the racist, hate-filled comments, whether towards Raina Scully, who is fantastic, or anyone else, you're garbage, you're nothing, you'll never matter. You're a garbage person. I feel like I've been very vocal about this, but like, when I, when I get into spats with people like Tariq Nishi, he posts a bunch of BS, misleading stuff, he calls me a suspected white supremacist, stuff like that. In many ways, I find him to be a scumbag. But if you go from my video or you see that and you go to Tariq and you call him the N-word, you can go fuck yourself, I disown you, get away from me. Now, all of that said, there are also people that argue that Logan Paul himself is racist. And not specifically just because of this video. Fellow creator Jimmy Wong tweeted, Hey world, if you didn't know, Logan Paul has always been disrespectful and racist towards Asians. This is nothing new, sadly. Then showcasing several several old Logan Paul tweets. And the worst of the three images he included came from 2012. Logan Paul writes, watermelon makes your penis bigger, black men. Soy increases the estrogen in your body, decreasing penis size, Asians. And that stirred up a debate of its own. Some people saying, yes, it's blatantly racist or at the very least, incredibly disrespectful. Others saying, no, it's just a joke. Some saying, well, it couldn't be racist because he said a positive thing about black men. To that point, I would say that's not really how that works. One, no one was accusing Logan Paul of being racist towards black people. And two, I think there's a really interesting debate and conversation around when, when you say a positive thing about a minority in your country. Many people see it as a gateway or a justification for racism. If you're saying a minority is superior in some aspect, that it makes it not racist for you to say a negative thing about another minority being worse. I'd also love to know what your thoughts are on people going back through people's Twitter history and finding offending content. I know there's some people that probably want me to like rip Logan Paul's head off for that tweet, but that really wouldn't make sense. While there are people that are offended by it, it was five years ago, he was 17, and while the age is not fully in Excuse. I know that when I was a much, much younger YouTuber, I said racially insensitive things, trying to make it a joke, thinking I was hilarious. And anytime I come across that content, I'm just like cringe, and I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm so fucking stupid. So it'd make me a hypocrite to go after Logan for that. Now, as far as the Logan Paul being disrespectful, maybe not seeing Japanese people as real people, that's a point several creators have made. Uh, when, when you look through his other footage from Japan, you go, oh. I don't know if you could argue it's specifically targeted towards Asian people, but he is incredibly disrespectful.
respectful. I mean, when you're a tourist, you are a guest in a country. And as far as being respectful, this is something Logan Paul hits on in his video. I just gotta be careful to not like disrespect the culture. Japan is all about the respect. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Whoa. Hi. How you feel? Oh. We're gonna be respectful. Hey guys, you want some fish? Oh. <laughs> you then see him just bothering people, trying to go about their day, not wanting to be filmed. Street instead of driving in cars. Hi, how are you? The road to Japan. Hello. Hi. Ah! Excuse me, sir. The game seems to be malfunctioning. Much oh broken though. He then starts throwing pokeballs at people, trying to capture them. I got you. Get, get, get him. I get him. <laughs> I choose you. Toyota, I choose you. No, no. Even at one point, throwing a pokeball at a Japanese police officer. Nice. And the reason I say that I don't think it's geared towards a group of people is if, if you look at his stuff just from LA, like a lot of the time it looks like as long as he gets his content, his views, he doesn't care about real world ramifications. He has a video on his channel where he has his fans across the street and then of course just the general public outside of his apartment. And he fakes someone shooting him in the back of the head in his apartment with a shotgun. Just faked murder with an audience watcher. And obviously I'm not trying to say that's a disrespect thing. I'm just saying that this is really in line with what I said when, when everything is content, you're viewing it just about views and oh, this is gonna work out for me. Nothing sacred. And that lends itself to carelessness, idiocy, and disrespect. I just personally think that Logan Paul's ego has gone unchecked for a very long time. Everything he does involves him winning. Even as I mentioned before, if we're looking at pure numbers, this has been a good controversy for him. Especially because the only place or entity that could check him would be YouTube, but has done nothing. But that said, with this story, I wanna pass the question off to you. What, what is your takeaway? I know there were several points and several points of debate. I, I just love to know your thoughts on the whole situation. Let me know in those comments down below. And then let's talk about Danny Kay from the UK. Now, the story around Danny Kay takes place over several years. In 2013, Danny was 24. He was living in Derbyshire in the UK. He meets a 16 year old girl, which is legal there. They hit it off. And for two years, the official story was that Danny and this girl met. She's named in the court docs as Jane Smith. And according to her, they had sex that she in no way consented to. And after half a year, she finally went to police and Danny was charged with rape. At his trial, the jury was shown Facebook messages between himself and the woman. The messages made it seem that Danny had lied to her about his age, claiming he was also 17, so it looks like he was lying to try and lure her in, then he raped her. Additionally, the jury got to see messages where he said sorry for hurting her. So in the eyes of the jury, easy case. Justice served, Danny goes off to prison. But here's the thing, the entire time, Danny was adamant that he was innocent. He claims that him and the girl met, they did have consensual sex. He said they continued to contact for some time before finally breaking things off. He then said he deleted the messages on his phone because he saw no purpose in keeping them. He also claimed that the messages shown at the trial were legit messages, but they were edited to make him look bad. Okay, saying, my jaw dropped. I said to the prosecutor that there were other messages that the conversations weren't complete. But he got angrier and louder and kept saying, I put it to you that you raped this girl and now you're lying to this court. And so for two years, Danny was in prison and for two years, Danny was claiming he was an innocent man. Then one day he's just talking to a fellow inmate about the issue. The inmate lets him know that his messages were likely archived. He reportedly tells Danny how to get them back. Danny then tells his sister-in-law and within five minutes, she had the messages. She told reporters, I couldn't believe how easy it was to find the messages. I am no social media expert, but it only took me a minute to find them. So how trained police couldn't is beyond me. And looking through the messages, wow, wow, wow. Let's go through the key moments. The moment where it appeared that he was lying about his age, where he says, how old are you, babe? You look nice. She says, I'm only nearly 17. He says, same here. Turns out to I'm only 17, he responded. Oh, cool, cool, are you single? She says, yep, just recently ended. I'm over it now though, what about you? He says, same here. Then we see evidence of friendly conversations after the alleged rape. The original jury just saw Kay say, it don't take you long, does it? You didn't really like me, did you? Completely removing the back and forth they had where he asked for her number, she still gave it. Her saying that she did actually like him. The text make it seem like she definitely wants to be with him. To the part where it looked like he was admitting to hurting her. He says, I do like you, I'm just fed up of everyone trying to fuck everything up for me. I just don't want you being hurt. She says, it's too late, I'm already hurt. He responds, no reply. I just got your message, yeah, well, I don't know what to say. There, she removed a massive part of the conversation from Kay. His later text of no reply, which was meant to be, hey, why haven't you responded to my text? Came off as, I have no reply as to hurting you. Okay, it doesn't 
doesn't matter. Yeah, I just keep fucking up my life. I just give up. Surprised I haven't topped myself yet. After it doesn't matter, she responds, I thought you would have at least tried to get me back, but you was like, yeah, okay. And to the top of myself comment, she said, don't say that. And there was the part where it looked like he apologized for raping her, saying, I mean it, I have much of a fucked up life to keep going and going, sorry. But then we find that there was a massive deleted section where you can actually see what the hell they were actually talking about. But the good news is these text messages were brought to the court. They released Danny the next day. But of course, the negative side is he still served two years in prison for something he didn't do. Danny is saying to the media, looking back, I kick myself for trusting a system that betrayed me. I just like to know why it all happened, why she lied, why the police didn't investigate properly. They've just taken our word for it. She might have written it on a piece of toilet paper and said, there's the conversation between us. As far as the Derbyshire police, they said, we will be reviewing our investigation to find out whether lessons can be learned. And as far as potential lessons, it appears that they just never looked into Danny's side of the story. According to reports, the investigating officer only asked for the login information from the girl. When you see things like this, it's just such a scary situation. Obviously, we talk about innocent until proven guilty, but what it looks like here is just a half-assed job looking for a conviction rather than justice. And if we're talking about human lives, uh, maybe don't rush. And that's actually where I'm going to end today's show. And remember, if you like this video, you like what I try and do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also remember, if you missed the last Philip DeFranco show you wanna catch up, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you wanna watch the brand new behind the scenes Friday vlog, click here. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you Monday.